So that's uh, World's Strongest Man over. Um, it was a completely unpredictable kind of year in terms of the event and the way it was going to go. Um, I'll show you what I actually had predicted for the heats and the podium. Some of them I kind of got right but in the wrong positioning and the podium was just sort of completely wrong to be honest. Um, between injuries, things changing in events and just the whole Covid thing. This year's sort of World Strongest Man was kind of, all the athletes were on the same kind of level of like ability and some of the groups were super hard and favoured a lot of the athletes in the groups. If certain athletes were in different groups they probably would have done potentially better or gained more points. Uh, though that's just strong man, anything could happen, people get injured and things just don't go away sometimes. So this is what I had predicted, um, so if you just watch this clip here and you'll see what I had predicted for the heat and the final. So heat one, my prediction is Luke Richardson is going to be first and Robert Obers will come second in that uh, heat. Heat two, I reckon Adam Bishop's going to come first in that heat and Evan Singleton is going to come second in that group. For heat three, uh, Tom Stoltman will come first for me and Alexei Novikov will potentially come second. Heat 4 is a bit of a harder one, though I reckon Jeff Groen will come first and potentially depending on how Graham Hicks' wrist is, I either place Graham Hicks or Melstead, maybe Melstead just because of injuries. And uh, Heat 5, my predictions are Brian Shaw to come first, then Luke Stoltman to come second. So for podium places, I reckon this is what will be the outcome for the overall tournament. I reckon first will be Brian Shaw, second will be Luke Richardson, and third will be either Tom or Luke Stoltman. It's kind of hard to pick between them, but if I had to pick one, maybe Luke Stoltman based on experience. Obviously there will be spoilers in this video, so if you want to wait to Christmas time to watch the actual show to find out who has won, I'm assuming it's going to be extremely difficult because it was like posted over social media quite flat over the whole week. So I doubt that's actually going to be possible to avoid that situation. So in the heats, the heats were actually, depending on which sort of heat the athlete was in, it was extremely difficult for certain athletes because there was a lot of athletes in certain groups that were really good at certain events. The points for the groups were extremely tight in certain places. But the older athletes and the veterans of the actual sports seemed to have done really, really well. Like Jerry Pritchard placed first in his heat. He had a really, really good World Strongest Man campaign. Um, didn't do as well in the sort of the final day, sort of final two days, but he blasted through his heat. Um, he did come fourth, which is really good for Jerry Pritchard. Like he usually is. He's consistent, but he doesn't usually place as high in the World's Strongest Man. Barry Hollands was very unlucky not to win his stone off. Um, to be honest, I think if he did that extra rep, um, he had a gentleman's agreement with Brian Shaw to get the same amount of reps to get joint first place in that sort of event. To be honest, I think that ruined his chances of actually getting first place in that group and pushing him forward into the finals. Um, he lost his stone runoff against Ty from Latvia. I can't quite pronounce his name, but he lost his uh, stone event to him. I think he just couldn't quite get hold of the last couple of stones, so that's basically why he lost that. Adam Bishop wasn't actually going to make the finals until Evan Singleton actually got injured with a bicep injury, I think. Or was it a tricep? I'm not quite sure. Either one of them, he had got either a bicep or a tricep injury. So Bishop wasn't even meant to be competing for the, the stone run. And then I think Shivakov would have actually won that if he hadn't actually got injured and torn or had a tweaked bicep in that sort of event. Everything that I'm actually saying right now is based on what I had potentially seen on YouTube and how the results went and what I know of athletes and the way they perform. So for me, one of the athletes that really underperformed was, for me, was Brian Shaw. Um, from training footage, from his attitude and, you know, before World's Strongest Man, he seemed to be in probably the best condition he's been in a long while. Um, he had a lot of belief in himself, he had a lot of, you know, training was going extremely well. Um, you could say COVID was a factor, you could say things changing was a factor, this or that. Though to me, they 
sound like excuses. Um, I don't know if the Strongman game's changing or the way that sort of things were actually going in Strongman, if they maybe suit him anymore. Like, he's obviously won World Strongest Man four times, though it was a different time, different era really right now. There's a bunch of new guys coming through that are extremely strong, extremely mobile, and they're getting better and better, uh, even at a young age. Uh, you got the likes of Luke Richardson, even though he didn't have a great finals, he did semi all right in the heats, um, first time at World Strongest Man. He done probably extremely well for it being his actual first World Strongest Man. Obviously he won Europe's Strongest Man, um, he obviously has things he has to work on and come back to. So you've got Novikov as well that actually won the whole competition. He was the most consistent and best performing athlete in that World's Strongest Man. Um, he was just leaps and bounds probably ahead of everyone. He done extremely well in the heats and in the finals he done really well as well. Certain events he placed sort of lower but he obviously kept in the top three the four places. So that had him win that. Yeah, about Tom Stolman either. Like he placed second overall in the competition. If a few events went better his way, he potentially could have won it as well because between him and Novikov, it was kind of very tight at times. But I don't know what it is about Brian Shaw. I don't know if he's just maybe past his prime, or if he's letting too many things get away, or making up excuses to not have performed well. Like you can see in some of his actual sort of videos, he was kind of his mood was kind of going down. He was pointing finger at different things, which I don't think he should be doing because everyone's in the same conditions. You know, if the events change, it changes for everyone. Um, you know, everyone's trained hard. He's trained hard. You know, it's, at the end of the day, some of the things are just down to him. You can't blame the conditions if it because it was being inside, if it was outside. Because everyone has to deal with them factors and conditions. I don't really know where Brian Shaw will be going from here. I don't know if he'll continue trying to get that fifth title, if he'll do it for a few more years, if he'll maybe take a break, or if he will like do something completely different. I don't really know. Um, I do reckon he should keep coming back and trying to win that fifth title. I think he can win it. Um, like the competition could have been completely, diff completely different if Mateus. Leishies, even half four came back. The comp competition could have been completely different again. Um, the events did seem really good for Brian Shaw on paper. It just, on the day, Alexei Novikov was just better. I love Brian Shaw and he is a great athlete. He's a great ambassador for the sport. But there's some not quite going right there. Um, you know, last year he changed his uh, dietitian from Stan Efferton to Nathan Payton, um, you know, he can't blame his diet now, you know, he had the best nutrition, he like looked good and previously before World Strongest Man, all the stuff was going right in so many different ways, um, he should have potentially got podium, I had him back for first place, I really did believe in him, I thought this was his year to come back to get his fifth title, it just wasn't to be this year, Maybe next year, I don't know. He's only 38, so he still has plenty of time because the likes of Mark Felix is still going on and he's 52, 53. And even in the heats, he did fairly well um, in certain events. You know, you, you can obviously see, like, even the older generation and the older people can still battle out there. You know, you got your likes of your Shivakovs that are older, your Caron, uh, your Felix. You know, the Terry Hollands, Terry Hollands like the best he has done in years, and he, he was unfortunate not to get a position. Um, to be honest, I think if Terry Holland, Terry Hollands won that uh, first place, Branchaw potentially maybe would have came lower again in the sort of rankings in the finals. I think Terry Hollands probably would have came above him because for me, Terry Hollands was actually physically doing better in the heats and doing better sort of overall performance wise. But as I've sort of previously said, Novikov won first place, Tom Stoltman won second, and Jeff Garone won third. Jeff Garone was really up there in the mix as well. He potentially could have won it if things went slightly his way in different events. Um, he was very lucky not to get first place. He was really up there to maybe potentially win it as well. Uh, just Novikov sort of pipped it for me. Um, though it was nice to see Jeff Crohn actually break onto the podium for the first time since he's actually been the world strongest man. This was his 10th final and he finally managed to get third place. Um, he was unlucky not to get second place as well. He's very 
I think there was maybe a couple of points between him and Tom Sullivan. Yeah, congratulations to them guys for placing podium. Uh, my predictions were completely wrong, completely off. My heat predictions weren't too far off. There's a few things went that people didn't get through and the sort of the placings I had probably got mixed up because I had Tom Stuntman to go first in his group and then Alexei Novikov though Alexei Novikov was just on fire All the results are out there on the internet There's plenty of YouTube videos on sort of placings and heats and where people came and results So it's all out there to be found if you want to find it I've seen a few sort of comments on Instagram and Facebook that about strongman changing in the direction it's going, like some people don't see it as being the world's strongest man because of the lack of static power events. But to me, there seems to be a good mix for me. There's a good mix of static events and there's a good uh, like mix of sort of mobile moving events as well. Um, to me, it is a good representation of the world's strongest man. And for me as well, I don't think it's healthy being that high away all the time. So it moving to a more mobile strength type sport is actually probably an ideal thing because it means that athletes can be a lighter weight, still be extremely strong, but not have to be as heavy for them static events because like, yes, being the strongest man is about being able to lift the most weight, but on the health point sort of standing, it's nice to see that, you know, these strong men can be mobile and fit and the body composition of these strong men has changed as well. If you look back in the early years, there was a lot more sort of par bellies and things like that, but now there's more like abs and like, well not abs, but there's like more sort of trimmed down strong men. Maybe that is a good way to go. You know, it's not anything like CrossFit, it's like the weights are extremely heavy that are still using. You know, there's a super yoke at 500 kilo. Not many people can move a yoke of 500 kilo. See, for some of the older athletes and veterans, I think this sort of change in sport isn't really going to do them any favours. Unless they're willing to maybe lose a bit of weight and get a bit more mobile and be quicker at certain events. So the whole TV side of things has a big factor as well because the producers and like certain people picked events to make it look good for TV so what they're trying to do is an entertainment type of thing you know sometimes they're picking weird objects and weird events because it's entertaining to watch I don't know I get well for me I would love to see someone left a massive weight and it just be a massive weight it didn't have to be anything special but for an entertainment side of things it might not look that great for people to watch. For me, I feel like it's going in a good direction. I don't think there's anything wrong with it being people are extremely strong but also extremely athletic. You know, it's good to sort of see from a health point of stand, standing and like, you know, see these people being able to have a bit less weight but still be extremely strong. I've seen and from the results from World's Strongest Man, it was seemed to be a really good show. It was really interesting. You know, you couldn't really predict what was going to happen. Uh, obviously, Novikov was always around the top, but obviously, you had uh, Tom Stoltman and uh, Jeff Caron in the mix there, and even Jerry Pritchard at a point looked like he could have got podium. So it was really intense and really actually good to sort of like look at the results and see the figures come out. I'd say clips and pieces of people doing certain events that you could get to see. Strongest man made the best of the bad situation with this whole COVID thing and put in really like stringent sort of procedures to go ahead to make sure that these events went. Obviously with it being hurricane season that had a big factor as well of actually making the heats indoors so they could actually film it and have all the athletes going because obviously the athletes were starting to get a bit agitated and waiting around all the time and going through numerous meetings. So I'm sort of excited to watch it at Christmas time, Boxing Day, to see you know how all the athletes actually sort of competed. Um, hopefully certain athletes will come back next year bigger, stronger, no injuries. Um, hopefully like people like Evan Singleton, I Ivan Toots, Graham Hicks, uh, Shivakov all recover from their injuries. Hopefully they come back next year, uh, it'll make it even a more interesting sort of competition. Obviously there'll be fans there hopefully again and you know, the whole situation will be going back to normal. Um, and I'm hoping Brian Shaw comes back onto the form that he's looking for and you know, he can find that form that has that dominance that he's been sort of urging to get back. Talk for hours and hours about worst Strongest Man, uh, it could be, it'll be too long a video to watch, too long to clip. Um, so 
this is just sort of my thoughts and feelings on World's Strongest Man and how it sort of went from what I've seen from results, figures and sort of bits and pieces of clips. Um, obviously I'll get to see more, we can probably do a bigger discussion at Christmas time when we watch the full footage. Obviously people know the results and who's won, so congratulations to Novikov. Uh, but that's all I really have for, for you today to watch. Um, but as usual guys, don't forget to hit the like button, to subscribe, to ring the bell, and I'll see you guys next time.